Welcome. In this video, we'll be going over geofences. Our definition of geofence is an area on the map that is important for users' tracking purposes and requires special attention. Let's start by heading over to the geofence tab. At the top, we can see two different list selections. We're going to go over the geofence list and come back to the groups list a little bit later in this tutorial. You'll notice we have a few geofences set up here, but we're going to get right into it on this tab. Let's go ahead and start the process of creating a geofence by clicking on the new button. This settings area is referred to as the geofences properties dialog. Let's go ahead and label this geofence by typing in the name text box. I'm going to name mine Exxon Station 221. Now let's select the color and font size we want our name to be. I'll choose red and 14 pixel size. In the description, we can put some extra details about this geofence. I'll use the address. Now I'll select the type of geofence it is, whether it's polygon, which covers an area based on the points you click, line, allowing you to cover roads easily by clicking along a path and making the line thick enough to cover the road, or circle, which allows the creation of a geofence by selecting a point and building the geofence based on a radius input. I'm going with polygon, and now I'll create the geofence by double clicking the land around my location I'm wishing to geofence. Whoops, looks like I accidentally clicked too many. I'll take this one off the map by double clicking the existing extra point. Let's clean this geofence up a bit. I'll make sure to fill out these corners by clicking and pulling the points closer to the land's edges. As you can see here, I can't really fill this corner without another point. I'll create a new point by double clicking on the existing geofence line and then pulling it over to the edge. Now let's decide what group it'll go in. This one will go in my Exxon gas stations group. Here, we can either choose to select an image from our desktop, or I can choose one from the existing library. I'll choose this gas station icon here. Here you can see the area, as well as the perimeter of the geofence that we're creating. Now let's select the color of this geofence. I'll make this one yellow. If I wish to leave the icon on the map, but hide the outline, I can uncheck the display shape on map box located here. Under visibility, you can specify map zooms at which geofences will be displayed or not. Different map types, such as Google Maps or Bing Maps can have different graduations of map scales. However, all possible values fall into a range of 1 to 19. 1 is the most detailed scale. By choosing it, you will see small streets and houses. 19 is the largest scale, and by choosing it, you will see an overview of the whole world. If a geofence is a city, it makes sense to see it on larger scales, such as 8 to 14. Whereas if it's a building, it's more logical to see it on more detailed scales. My geofence is a parking lot, thus I choose the visibility level from 1 to 8. Lastly, you can choose to cancel, clear the information you've put in, or save the geofence you've created. Let's go ahead and save. Awesome, we've created a geofence. Now let's see what this information looks like completed. To the left of the geofence name, we can see the visibility checkbox. This box decides whether or not the geofence appears on the map. It should be noted that the geofence's visibility does not affect its existence in notifications or reports. If we hover over the name of the geofence, we can see all the details of it in the tooltip box below. To the right of the geofence, we can see a number under the vehicle icon. This number represents the quantity of units within that geofence. And if a geofence has certain settings we'd like to carry over to a new one we're creating, we can choose to copy an existing geofence and remake it with a new location by clicking on the copy button. Let's return to the top of the work area. And now we're going to look at the groups list. I won't be going over the functions that are the same as this one, just the things that are different. Let's go ahead and create a new geofence group by selecting on the new button. Now let's decide a name for our group, such as hardware suppliers. And if we want, we can describe this group in more detail in the description. Next, we'll need to add some units to our group. But before we can get started, we can make this process easier by sorting out the existing geofences. So in this box, I'll select items outside groups. This will clear my list of anything that has already been grouped. Then, I'll type out some words or words that are in common across all the geofences, such as hardware. Now that I've sorted out the units on the left side, I actually need to transfer them to my group which is on the right side. 
The quickest way is to double click on the individual geofence as long as there is a small number of geofences. Although if I have several in separate locations along the list, I can highlight multiple by holding control and clicking each geofence once. In the end, I'll send them to the right side by clicking the arrow here. And now if I have several geofences next to each other, I can click the top geofence, hold shift, and select the bottom geofence. This will highlight everything in between my clicks. Then I can add them to the right. And last of all, if my search worked extremely well, I can click the button at the bottom to highlight all the geofences at once and move them all over by selecting the move arrow. Now that we've got our group, let's hit OK at the bottom. On the list, we can see our groups as well as our geofences. In order to show the geofences, all you need to do is hit the Expand List button on the left of the geofence. To the right of the geofence group name, there is a number in parentheses. This number indicates the number of geofences within the group. Congratulations and thank you for completing our tutorial on the geofence tab. I hope by now you feel a little more at ease when operating through our platform. To further extend your knowledge of our platform, check out our other video tutorials. I'll see you next time.